start recording. Do you happen to know yep. what how this um word is pronounced? Uh kagao. Good guess. It's actually mu or mukao. Oh, mukao. Mukao basically means like across from you. So whoever's on the other side that you're talking to. So like mukao can be a physical direction mm. or more metaphorical, like on the other side of the phone. So right now you are mukao from me because you're on the other line of this conversation. And but, yeah. But yeah, generally it's a, it is commonly used for physical direction. So what's right in front of you is mukao across from you. Um, mm. Can you read the sentence from our book? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, hey. So first off, this ends with a wa. Who do you think is talking right here? Probably Annie. Yep, Annie. So she's making a statement. So what did you say? Sonna koto wa nai. What do you think that means? It's like hazawanai where it's just impossible. Basically, uh specifically say that such a thing, so such a thing as that is not. So that's not true, in other words. And then she says, mm. What does that mean? So uh, it means I understand. Exactly. Kind of, like, I know. Yeah, specifically saying it's just I that understands. So she's like, so she's basically saying you might not understand, but I do. That's why mm. it's like niwa. Perfect. And next we have sore kara isuruba ni mukatte itta. Sore kara, so like over there the pterodon, and that's mukao. So in the distance said. Yes, he said. So, kara, what does kara mean? Mm, sore kara. Eh, eh, eh. So, it's like after that. Yes, that is the from or after. So, after that, sore kara, perfect. And then we have, the, we don't have a topic. The topic of sentence is not defined in the sentence. So, we can actually assume it was the previous speaker, which is Annie. So, Annie. Mm -hmm. After she does this action, she too, the putradon, turns toward him. She mukattes. She goes, she goes, so she's across from the putradon. And then she itas. What does ita hmm. mean? Uh, to say. Yes, to say. Um, do you happen to know this kanji? Mm, that is himai. Good guess. It's actually na. Namae, which is name. Ah, uh, Namae. Hi. So, namae. right over here, I have two different sentences one with agiru at the end and one with kudedu. So, kudedu and agiru kind of tell you something about who is talking. So, um, there's if a, someone who's talking says a sentence, Namae o tukite kudedu, that means I, the speaker, receive a name. It's basically this. Tukeru is like to attach a name. So it means that someone attaches a name to me mm. and that they are thankful to this. What if a speaker says the next sentence? Can you read that for me? Namae o tsukete akeru. What do you think that means? <clears throat> Who is getting a name in this sentence? The speaker or the listener? So, namae o tsukete akeru. Huh. Ageru. So I want to say the speaker, but. So ageru means to give. Ageru. Ageru is to give, mm. and kuredu is to receive. So when you end a sentence with ageru, it means that the speaker is giving something to the listener. Namae o tukite ageru means I will give you a name. I will attach a name to you. Hmm. Kuredu means. To the the opposite. I will receive a name attached to me. So that's why kuredu is to receive and agiru is to give. To give. Right. 
So a lot of times kudidu will show up in Japanese as a way to basically say please or thank you. Just to have a statement. Mm. So if someone gives you something and you didn't want it, you probably shouldn't use kudidu. If they just like, I don't know, like shot you or something. Like if they yeah. you received the bullet, but you didn't want it, then you should not use kudidu. So it's a kind of a way to express thanks um, to when you receive a action or something. Okay, so now we have Annie talking, since that's what was mentioned in the last sentence. Can you read it for me? Uh, so that namae o tsukete ageru, uh, benri de, de yu no wado. Hmm. So, so the, yes, that's right. Namae o tsukete. So the name I will receive, again, mm. or the name I will, uh, the name I will give. Yes. Again. I shall give. The name I will give. I shall attach a name to you, or I'll give you a name. Is mm. how we'd say that in English, but it's literally attached. In English, yeah. The name I'll attach to you is Benny. So so, and specifically, Said. she's definitely she's double checking Henry. Do you know a do? Do is basically from do or mo. Do is like, like a generic is question mark. Yeah. So how is it? So Henry te you is basically saying this is the person saying the defining the word of Henry. How would you define it? Is what she's literally saying. So Henry, would you define mm -hmm. that as what? <laughs> it would be a literal translation of this, but contextually in the culture, it mm -hmm. means how. What does the name Henry make you feel? Is that a great name? Do you like it? How how about the name Henry? Mm. Okay, I want to skip that. Um, do you happen to know this kanji? Oh wow. Uh, Kiku. That looks a lot like Kiku. You keep on guessing Kikis today. Uh, Kiku is to <laughs> listen. Uh, it looks like this. Do you want to do a second uh, guess? Aku. It does start with a K. Oku. It's kaku. Kaku. Oh kaku. Mm. You know what kaku means? Uh, to listen. Kaku is uh, um ka kaku is to write. Kiku, which is the word you guessed earlier, is to listen. Ah, hi. Oh. Kiku, kaku. Hi. Uh, hi. Okay. And um, I feel like I didn't make this thing right. Um, can you read the sentence for me? あ、ジャックはアニーの言うことに構わずあ、ノートノートに書く、書き込んだ。はい。So uh, yep. our main essence of the sentence is ジャックはノートに書き込んだ。What do you think that means? Hmm. So Jack note, so he wrote on the notebook. Exactly. Komu uh -huh. is kind of like that, adding so in. So you wrote in the notebook is a komu. Because mm -hmm. komu is a verb that kind of means to put something inside of something. For example, uh, nige komu means to run into something. Or tobi komu means to fly into something. So komu helps kind of get a into kind of meaning to verbs. Mm -hmm. So that's basically to write in the notebook. And then they're describing his action with this right here. Do you have to know what kamawazu means? It means without doing kamau. Kamawazu. Kamawa. That sounds very familiar. Kamawa. Mm -hmm. Definitely heard that before. Kamau. Kamawa. Becomes kamawazu. Kamao. Kamao. A lot of times you'll hear nai. Kamawa nai. So that's where that, that's Kamao being familiar. Nai. Um, so kamau means to care about something. Mm. So ka kama wa nai means to not care, and kama wazu mm. means without caring. So in other words, he without ignores caring. ani no kotoba, ani no yu koto. So what does he ignore? <clears throat> he ignores Annie's speech. Exactly. Or the, what things, Annie said. the things Annie is saying. Perfect. <clears throat> nice. 
And we had this one last time we met, which was like a month ago <laughs> or more. Mm-hmm. Do, do you recognize this kanji? Uh, it has the X, which I it, don't see often. It doesn't have a lot mm. of relationship with the X because they're like it does show up in a lot of things like math and stuff. That kanji right there should mm. be no. Do you happen to remember what no meant? No. Just no. Uh huh. No. I did not. So no is your brain. Right. It's, it's a no. Yeah, it's a pretty no. weird kanji that we have like almost like a map going on and then a weird smiley face and then the moon. Uh, I'm not sure mm-hmm. where the story is for this guy. You need maybe you need to have a brain in order to read a map in moonlight. I don't know. <laughs> uh, do you happen to know the kanji down here? Uh, I think that's the kanji in fire, which was like ha. Ah, uh, it looks a lot like fire, which is he. This is fire. This right here is actually the kanji he. for small. So this is oh, chisai. Chisai. Hi. Chisai. Nice. Chisai. So right here we have something that Jack wrote inside of his notebook. What did he write? Uh no wa chisaso. Chisaso. Perfect. Chisaso. So so is a adjective that we saw way back in like our first lesson that means like seems like. It's used when you make a a guess based off of something of like you're just kind of making a guess based off of like the appearance. So he makes a hypothesis mm. that the no contextually of the pitterodong is chisai, chisaso. So what do you think chisaso. he wrote? So basically, the pterodon has a small brain. Exactly, he says. I think it has a small brain. Okay, so this word right here is totsuzen. Totsuzen. This totsuzen, totsuzen means suddenly. Totsuzen. Um, so let's go read our next line from the book. Uh, Jack wa pterodon no o mochito ochido uh mete ita. Hi. Mete ita. Okay, so mete. So he once again saw the pterodon. Hi. So miru a lot of times is translated as to see. However, its meaning is more similar to to look at. So it's more like Jack mm. looks once again at the putradan. Um, but it is a lot of times it's taught, like especially in the dictionary, it's like to see, to see, like stuff like that. So you think to see means to saw, saw in past tense, but actually it's mm. looked at. To to happen to see is actually mieru, which is a different verb. This is the catch. Your eye catches onto something, mieru. Um, and... Uh, that's just an example of badly defined words because that's why there's an O here. <laughs> it's something that I haven't really taught you because, uh, uh, but yeah, it's because he's basically, mm-hmm. he has intent here. He's decided, I'm going to look at the putteradon once again. Hi. And then what does he do after he looks at the putteradon? Yeah. So he just said yeah, everything he, said. he just thought of right now. Probably. Uh, most likely the next sentence is actually going to have um, quotation marks. Right here, so we see them quotation mm. marks. So that's what he actually says out loud. Hi. So, oops. So this word right here ends with zen and means suddenly. Do you know how it starts? Totsuzen. Yep, totsuzen. Totsuzen. So now, what did Jack say? Koetsu, moshikashita, moshikashitara, totsuzen, hen, uh, heni. So, what is who's koitsu referring to? Do you know? Koitsu. It's like a rude way of saying you. I'm guessing the pterodon. 
So it both is and isn't a real rude way to say you. If you're referring to a human being, it is rude. So it's rude to humans. Hi. And I would say it is like nice toward things. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like if you're talking like about your car, you said this guy is my baby mm. or something like that. So that's when koitsu tends to be used for things rather than like kore, for example. Kore is like the default for things. So he's actually mm. being neutral, polite for referring to, I would say, an animal. He's not being rude, but he's also not being polite. Because uh, he's saying it's not a thing, it's a koitsu. But he's also, if you use that to a human being, that would be a step below human kind of. Mm. Uh, so sometimes you'll see a character in an anime call someone are that is so rude that would be the rudest thing <laughs> I think that'd be mm. more rude are. than using oh my or something are that means that thing that <laughs> that thing are. Are wa ningen desu ka? Be like, are is that man. even human versus aitsu is just a rude way to say you um, in that context mm. so yeah it's so in this context since you're talking about an animal I would say this is the correct term to use basically mm. but yeah it's basically i say it's very similar to that guy so if i'm talking to you and said that guy it's it's not like that polite to refer to someone as that guy in english you know better to use their hey. name so kind of similar to that um hi you know what moshikashitara means main part is the moshi moshi Moshi, Moshikara. Uh, Moshikashite sounds familiar. Mm-hmm. Moshikashite. Moshikashi. It's like, however, I think. Close. It's actually like, it, it's like one of the many probablys or possibly. Mm. So here, Moshikashitara means it might be quite true, kind of, like, or like perhaps. Perhaps that guy has done a Totsuzen Henni. A totsuzen henni is a mutation. So he's basically saying maybe that guy is a mutated animal, and that's why it looks like a putteradon. Oh. Mm. You know what kana tells us? Kana doesn't really. It's like a filler kind of. It just means something kana. How do I so yeah, that? it's another way to add vagueness. So whenever you have moshi in a sentence, normally the sentence needs to end with an actual uh, vagueness modifier, which is going to be kana or daro or hazu or something like that. So in Japanese, mm-hmm. when you have the word perhaps, you need to end with a perhaps, like a sentence ender. And they use kana, which is kind of like I wonder. That's the version they use. Mm. Um, kana, hi. So he's like, hmm, I wonder if this guy perhaps ha- is from a sudden mutation. And do you remember how this kanji is read? Uh, which one? Oh, that is, uh, that is brain, which yes. is no perfect. Hey, no. And this part that is not kiku, it is kaku. Perfect. And this guy that. Is chi so chi sa perfect? And the last one on this page. That one is totsuzan. Perfect. Now this one right here is a word you've been looking for. What is this word? Ah, kiku. Yep, kiku. So kiku has this gate right here with an ear in it. Mm. That's kiku. To listen or to ask, depending on the context. Um, so let's go read this sentence. Uh, totsuzen hen, henny? Totsuzen henny. So that's yeah. the word we just uh, saw nani. earlier, which was the mutation yeah. word. But Annie doesn't know this kanji. That's why it's written like that. She doesn't know this oh, okay. word. So you could just write in katakana if you don't know it. Yeah. I guess. It, it, it's mm. a writing quirk in Japanese to kind of show characters' brains. Um, in general, things are written in katakana to show that they're special. Because if you see a bunch mm. of hiragana, it is unreadable for everybody. No one wants to see hiragana just like that. That's just, it's horrible. Yeah. It's much easier to split things up with katakana. Hi. 
、そう、突然、あ変に、何それ、兄が、あ消えた。消えた。消え ?Where does air come from? 聞いた。はいはいはい。Perfect. So, right here, 何それ、突然、and he. Is she making a statement or asking a question? Nani so it's just like a rhetorical question where she's like, What's this? Or like, What is yeah, that? It what ends did you with say? a little bit of a rhetorical session, but the first one is a question right here like, She's like, Mutation? What even is that? So, because of that, this、mm-hmm. kiku is meaning to ask, is this what I put it out? Because she didn't, she didn't hear this. Annie didn't hear what is a.、Um, Mutation thing. Instead, Annie is like, what even is a sudden mutation? What, is, what does that word mean? So Annie's like, Nani s o d e That's a big adult word. And soon、um, <laughs> Jack will redefine it. So a while ago, I told you this kanji wrong. I mean, well, this one wrong.、Um, but do you happen to remember how this guy up here is read?、Uh- It looks like the kanji from umameru, umareru. It is. So, umareru is to. Ukiru. Yeah, ikiru. Ikiru, ikiru. to be alive.、Hi. And how about the word below? So, we got ikiru. And that is ikimono. Yeah, the ikimono. thing in the thing. Perfect.、Ikimono. So, this thing over here is not ikimono. And for that, I, a while ago, I told you it was, but that was a lie. Uh, there is a rule where you can、mm. mash these together and it will keep the reading, but it just so happens that this is a word on its own as well, which is seibutsu. Seibutsu?、Uh, seibutsu. They all mean the exact same thing, though.、Um, ikimono and a seibutsu both mean living creature.、Mm. Yeah. So, seibutsu is what happens when it's the kanji are directly touching. They got kuris.、Mm. Ikimono, seibutsu.、Mm. Okay. So, what's this word right here again? That is ikiru. Oh, no, that's not. That's. We got i k i m o Yep, i k i m o n o Perfect. So, let's go read. What did Jack say? Uh, futsu no ikimono kara tozen katachi ya seishitsu ga matta or matta? Matta ku. Chigao, Chigao, Mago, Mago ka. That is Umareru, Hai, Umareru. De, de, you, de, you, de, you, Kotoba. Or sorry, Kotoda. Hai. That's that, Umareru. Do you know what Mago means? The funny word to be here. Mago. Komago? Ah,、uh, not sure. Mago is granddaughter. So、oh. It's kind of a funny word to be here.、Um, but okay, so first off, we got Futu no ikimono. What does that mean? Futu no ikimono. So it's normal living thing. Yes, a normal living thing. Then we have kara, which what does kara mean? Normal living thing, kara. So it's like.、Uh... Something that binds something. I mean, it's、Kara、is it the one with events?、From. No, that's not the one. Kara means、ah, from. So, so kara so, is always、right. either going to mean from or because. Because occurs、mm. after、um, clauses, which is a big word to say basically baby sentences. From occurs、mm. after nouns and basically just nouns. There's a small exception for te form. Um, but basically, that's how they're different.、They're, it's going to be always grammatically obvious whether or not kara means from or because.、Uh, so, if this right here was kara, was、um, because, it would be ikimono da kara. We'd throw in da here so that it's the, at the end of a sentence.、Mm, da kara.、Um, so, that's why da kara a lot of times is seen as, as, as that because they're adding in da as the end of sentence marker. So, ikimono kara、uh, means、right. from. Normal living creatures. Totuzen. What does totuzen mean? Totuzen. Suddenly. Yeah, suddenly, 
they they're um they they're muggle got umareru which what does that mean oh they're... in this context it might be pronounced as son and that would make more sense because that is descendants uh the kanji is the same so that's like this disgusting but i'm gonna write son here um So the children were born. Yes, their descendants are born. Now these descendants are then described with a relative clause, which is mataku chigao. Mataku chigao. So they're like mataku different, kind of like exactly. Mataku uh, means like completely. Mm, or totally. So in this context, it'd be say they're the, the descendants that are born from these animals that are normal are totally different. And they're totally different in what kind of way? Katachiya seishitsu. Katachiya mm. seishitsu. So katachi. What does katachi mean? Katachi means shape. And seishitsu is nature, like um personality, kind of. So the shape of their personality. Yep, the shape. One. Their shape and their personality characteristics. Mm. Oh, yeah. Hi. Um, hi. So then it ends with te yu koto da. So this te yu is something we actually saw not that long ago when she was using defining things. Defining. This is This is a set phrase to define stuff. So it's basically saying A is defined as B kind of. So a lot if you're mm. going to be defining words, this also shows up the at the end and the beginning of sentences like that. So it's saying that the meaning of so that has the meaning basically is defined as this. And contextually we, we know we're defining the word um sudden mutation. So that's why it's ending with te yu koto. So that just is like hey, it. it goes at the end when you're um defining things. That is the definition of the previous stated word. Um, do you happen to recognize this kanji down here? Oh, that's the one with the big head. That's so, so. the neck. I think yep. it's neck. It is neck. Mm. What is neck in Japanese? Neck in Japanese. Eto Sinaka. That's actually um back. Back is Seneca, like your spine. Neck is kubi. Ah, kubi. Kubi. Hi. Um, next is this guy up here. Can you read it for me? Sakao. That's actually what out. Oh, what out. What out. What does what out mean? I get the feeling it's like two. Mm, laugh, I think. Yes. So we are taught that what mm. out means to laugh. Mm. Uh, on its own, what out about 90% of the time means smile. I, I don't know why we're taught it means to laugh. Um, it can mean to laugh, but normally you'll have like an automatopedia word right over here that is what kind of laugh they're making. So on its own, it's normally just a smile. So weird things. Mm. Um. So here she maybe she's laughing a little bit, but um, and on its own it just kind of means smiley. But yeah, let's go read our sentence. Just smile. Ah, sono toki putteredon, putteredon ga kibi o futano de ani ga ah. Aniga. Da, 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 that is the kanji for warui or warau. Warau right. de ita. Nice. So, first off, we have a putteradon doing kubi o futta. So, in English, we would say atama o futta, but in Japanese, they say kubi o futta. Do you know what furu means? Fudu means to shake. 
So when they say to shake your neck, it means to shake your head. There, that, that's yeah. the, the word. So the putradon shakes its head, but literally it says neck. Because of that, what happens? So Annie, what did Annie do? My recommendation is not to go backwards when you hit verbs. Verbs are at the end of these things called clauses, which are baby sentences, and they're all kind of in their own magical blocks. So they're kind of like a big barrier whenever you hit a verb. So this right here is a barrier. It's like, ah, uh, do not go past me. You have hit. It's like when you're playing a video game and you're like Mario jumping and you're like, oh no, I can't go back anymore. That's what happens when you hit verbs. Mm. So okay, way, Annika. This is its own thing. What's the next thing? What did Annie do? So Annie, ah, karaoke ita. So she said that she smiled. Um, so that'd be to. More like she smiled. So she smiled and she said. So she smiled and said, dot, dot, dot. Next sentence will have something mm. in quotation marks. So what does sono toki mean? Sono toki means from that time or at yeah. that time. At that time, the putradong shook its head. Because of that, that's no de, Annie laughed or smiled and said dot dot dot, which will be our next sentence. Before that, we have some kanji to double check. What's this word? Oh, can't hear anything. Oh, oh no. what's this word? Oh, I can hear you now. Nice. Um, that is ikimono. Hi, ikimono, living thing. And next is this guy. What's oh. that guy over there? Hi, that is a uh, wara, waratte. Yep, waratte. Nice. Okay, so now we have Annie talking. Let's go start there. What does she say? Ah, uh, hora totsuzen hen hen i. Hi. So this te right here, we, we should start here with the te in this case. Do you know what this te is telling us? Uh, is it quotation te? It is quotation te. So she's she's translating what the putradong said. Um, so he says, look, mm. the putradong says, um, totsuzen hen ka nan ka janai. So, so definitely Henry is nanka a little bit not nice. So definitely that's not good. That's or a good guess. A nice name. So nice, that word is not in here. But janai is not and totsuzen henka is in here. So it's saying it's not a sudden change. Nanka is a kind of fillerish word that modifies the word that comes before it meaning something like that so right here it's saying something it's it's not something like a sudden mutation mm. would be like a way to translate look it's saying it's not something like a sudden mutation so it's kind of like saying something like something like um and now we have jack talking Danka. what does jack say じゃあ、こっちはこいつは何何なんだ何なんだここは一体うん、どこなんだよ、どこなんだよ。はい。So, じゃ well, こいつは well then he なんだ So then what is he? Exactly. Basically the exact same ここは一体。Yep, 一体。But not like, it's not out. It's um, what on earth. 
ah, ここ行きたい。So, where are we? Like, what is this place? Exactly. どこなんだよ。So, what is this place? はい、exactly. どこなんだよ。So, this, where is it? And then the itai, where on earth are we? Perfect. Um, so, I'm going to pause our recording.